we are so blessed to have a loving family that opens their home Amen. to um, these students because um, it really is an opportunity to express the love of Christ. Express the love of Christ to the world. You don't have to be a missionary in the foreign field to be a missionary, right? Amen. Because really our mission field is right here in our own backyard. And we're going to talk about that. Um, the last few weeks we've been talking about the core values of the sanctuary. And um, the reason for that is to understand what we believe as a body of believers and what God wor God's word has to say about it. Because what a man thinks in his heart will determine his actions and what he'll do and that will determine your outcome right it's so hard for teenagers and kids in school to realize how long the how short the journey is but how easily it can go astray I love going to my my senior class reunions I'm going to be going to my 45th class reunion I, I graduated when I was five but anyway um, <laughs> and how many lives that's a lot Thanks, Mom. She knows that's not true. Anyway, <laughs> that's funny. Thanks, Mom. I needed that. Uh, anyway, <laughs> all right. Uh, I love going to my class reunions because you can just see that kind of like the end of the road. You know, some of the people that I graduated with are already passed on, either to heaven or to hell. And uh, it's amazing how close we have uh, all grown towards God in our later years because mortality seems more real when you see your classmates pass on. And um, you can see the lives that were destroyed through drug abuse or, or alcohol or uh, even smoking, um, people dying of diseases that they would not have other got, otherwise gotten if they'd have chosen not to do those harmful things to their bodies. But every one of us are on a journey, and God um, created us for an eternal destiny that is found in him and in his presence. And if we want to uh, find our place in his kingdom, we need to know what we believe, why we believe it, and then act upon it, right? Because a foolish man is one that hears the word and then doesn't do it. And so we've been talking about our core values, and right now we're really concentrating on relationships because God is a God of relationships. He is God the Father, Jesus is his Son, and we, if you have been born into the family of God by the power of the Holy Spirit, you are a child of God. That makes us brothers and sisters because if I'm brought into my family and my sister is brought into... Right, we're sisters and brothers. We belong to each other. Amen. And isn't that awesome? You belong to me. I need you. You need me. We've been talking about the types of relationships that, are, uh, that uh, we believe God cares about. And uh, God, we began with talking about our relationship with God, our Father. Um, we cannot know God, our Father, unless we first get to know Jesus. Because he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to God, the Father, except through Christ. Now, it, that's just the way it is. You, you know, religion and statues and things that you bow down to will not get you to God. But Jesus Christ will take you there. He'll take you by the hand and he'll lead you to his Father. He said, I came that you might know the Father. You will know what he's like and how he sounds just by looking at me. And all of that's recorded in the Bible. He says, I don't do anything except what I see my Father doing. I don't say anything except what I hear my Father say. So if you've seen me, Jesus says, then you have seen the Father. You can know what God is like. Jesus was the good shepherd. He was a loving shepherd he was good to, he was kind merciful and compassionate and what does that say to you about how we should be mm. because if people are going to see God the father they're going to see it through us amen and we need to start looking and acting and talking like Jesus so our first relationship that we must grow in and I really can't overemphasize this is our relationship with God the Father. And I want to tell you, 
I have been having some incredible times with God the Father this morning. I mean, this morning I thought, Lord, do you want me to change my message? Because God was just, it was awesome. Let me tell you, I sit down in the morning with a cup of coffee. I shut my eyes and I just listen. And God speaks to me. He, he wants to talk to you. He wants to have sweet fellowship with you. God wants to hang out with you. You know what God loves? He loves walking on the beach. I've been having a wonderful time with the Lord going to the beach. Hannah Park, it's 10 minutes from my house. I just get in the car and go. It doesn't matter who goes with me. I leave them behind and I take off down the beach. And I talk to God. And you know what? Sometimes I just stop and I listen to the waves. The sound of the waves coming. The ocean. We are so blessed to live near the ocean. And, and I see the seagulls looking for their breakfast in the sand. And God and I have an incredible time walking down the beach together. And you know what? If you're a hunter or a fisherman, God will go in that boat with you. He'll hang out on the tree stand with you. But you know what? You've got to make time if you're going to have an intimate relationship with God. If you're going to get to really know God, you're going to have to spend time with him. Quiet time. Time without other people. Without the noise of the television, without the noise of... Don't go turn on your computer first thing in the morning. Don't go look at your Facebook and your emails. Do not turn on your TV. Do not turn on Christian radio. Do not. Go find a quiet place that you can listen to God and just be with him. He loves coffee. He loves tea. He'll sit and visit with you. Just make it tea time. Make fellowship with God your first priority because out of that relationship flows every other relationship that you will have on the planet Earth. Every relationship you have is affected by how, what, how, how your walk with God is. And so that's the first and foremost thing I really tell you. God loves you. He wants to... He knows you. He knows you inside and out. He knows you better than you know yourself. He knows everything about you. He knows what's inside your heart. He knows how many hair follicles you have. He knows how long your fingernails are. He knows every wart on your body. And he knows every sin in your heart. He still loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He wants you to know how much he loves you. God loves you. That's why he sent Jesus to save our souls, to die for our sins so that we could get to know him. Amen? Amen? And so that takes time. You know, relationships take time. You cannot have a real relationship. You can have surface relationships, which are nothing. I don't have time for them. But you cannot have a true relationship with anyone unless you spend time with them. And it begins with our relationship with God. If you don't get your priorities right there, your priorities are all going to be messed up in every other area of your life. And that's where idolatry comes in to suck the life right out of you. Whatever you spend your time, your talent, and your treasure on is what you worship. It is what will consume you and eventually destroy you. It will destroy you. It will. Whatever you worship will destroy you unless you worship the true God of heaven. And so we go on from there. Out of an intimate, loving relationship with God the Father, he fills you up with all that is holy and pure. And in himself, he washes away all the junk the bitterness, the unforgiveness, the ungrateful attitudes, the pride, the arrogance, and all that is ugly and disgusting and disgusting. He gets it out of you over time. And he fills you up with everything that he is. And he's so loving. He's so merciful. He's so kind. He's so gracious. He's so generous. He's so good to us. And then we're able to love others the way he loves us. And... We talked about our relationships with our families, how we must forgive everyone, but especially our parents. Start there. And we've talked about how we must honor our parents and how we must uh, love our children and, and not be harsh with them. We've talked about all of this. I encourage you to get the other CDs of the prior messages or listen to them on the, com on the uh, Internet Amen. on our website. And um, it's pretty incredible. 
God cares about your marriage. We talked about that. Talked about how, what God's word has to say about marriage, about husbands and wives. We've talked about all that. Please go back and listen to these CDs. I'm listening to them in my car. I didn't know I talked so fast. I'm trying to slow it down today. Um, but it's, it, it'll build you up, and it, it really will remind you of what God calls us to be and how we're to live our lives. Amen? And by the way, you can't have an intimate relationship with your wife if you don't have an intimate relationship with God. You're going to be superficial, and you're always going to be butting heads. You're not going to be able to have an intimate relationship with your wife or, hus or husband if you don't take time to be alone with them. You need date nights. You need to have romantic romance in your marriage. Amen. You need it. You need it. You need romance in your marriage. You need to do what you did when you were dating. Love each other. Look each other in the eye and tell each other how wonderful they are. You are. We need to love each other. And then we can be fit parents to raise godly children. If you are always arguing with your spouse, you are going to be a terrible example for your children. You are. Kids are going to grow up thinking this is how you're supposed to live, and they're going to think, well, Christianity didn't do much for me in my household, so what do I want with it? It's so sad to see Christian kids growing up in homes where moms and dads fight and argue. And you know what? It takes two to tango, my mother always said. If one of you is being bad, the other one needs to just go hide in a closet and pray for them. But you don't need to argue. All right? And we, need, we learned a lot about that in our talk on uh, family relationships. We also talked about that if you came from a dysfunctional family, and unless those issues are healed in your own heart, and unless there's been forgiveness and restoration in those relationships, Chances are you're going to be a dysfunctional member of a church and you're really never going to find a church you like. There's always going to be a problem because guess what? Dysfunctional people go to church and everybody gets offended. Doesn't take much to get offended in church, especially if you're easily offended. That's the problem with being without that relationship with God the Father. He can't heal you so that you're not easily offended. It shouldn't take... It shouldn't be that you get offended every time that somebody says something, looks at you wrong. I'm offended. I'm hurt. Oh, poor me. We talked about all that. We talked about last week on uh, the reason God puts us in a church family and how absolutely vitally important it is to grow in intimacy with one another. To take off the mask. You know that Christian mask that comes to church on Sunday morning after you just had a great big fight with your husband? and says, oh, everything is so perfect at the Senac house. We don't have any problems. And I tell you, you're a liar. Because everybody has problems. The richest men in the world have problems. Money will not solve your problems. God can, but nobody else can. Anyway, we went through all that. And really, you cannot have intimate relationships in the church if, you haven't, if it isn't working its way through every, these other relationships, our relationship with God, working its way through our relationship with our parents, then our spouse, then our children, then we come into the church and we learn how to love one another and minister to one another and serve one another, and then we go out and we are prepared for the workplace. And that's what we're going to talk about today.